Now I know because this is a soft on power supply, I'm going to have to have the front panel connected. Uh, well, I suppose I could manually short out some pins, whichever one, using a continuity meter I can tell goes to the um, on switch on the front of the panel, but that's kind of cack handed. Um, but I need to know what voltages I should be expecting out of these, and because I haven't managed to find any data sheets for the, power ca or the card cage, the tape driver, the hard disk, I'm left to do some guesswork. Now I know that the hard disk uses plus 5, plus 12, and minus 12 volts. And if we look at the cable here, we've got red, black, grey, and orange. And I'm going to make some assumptions, they may not be 100% correct, but they're going to be pretty solid. Black is always ground. Always. You'd have to be a really sadistic son of a bitch to not have your black wires as a ground. Red is damn near always plus 5 volts. At least in a system like this, it, it, it's just going to be plus 5. So that is with orange and grey. Orange is usually plus 12. That's carried on right through to... AT power supplies and ATX power supplies and PCs. So again, it's a fair assumption, which leaves grey, which is most likely minus 12 volts. And again, this is an assumption, but what we're trying to do here is power the supply on and then using a voltmeter test what's coming out of these outlets here. So if I'm wrong, all I'm going to do is come up with a voltage that doesn't match what I'm expecting. But given I know that this only has ground plus 5, plus 12, minus 12, I should expect those voltages coming out. Obviously, if I got um, plus 5 on this, and then plus 12 on this red line, that would be a pretty good indication that something's gone wrong, because again, you'd have to be really sadistic to have two lines of the same color that do different things. Now, I don't know what this requires. I know this requires those voltages because... There is some documentation on them, and most conveniently, there's a sticker on the front that gives the supply voltages. This, I'm not so lucky on. However, we go back to our colors, and we have black, red, purple, and gray. Now in this case, I'm going to run by the same set of logic here. Black is ground, red is plus 5, gray is presumably minus 12, and purple is probably plus 12. And I'll explain how I come to this conclusion. What we've got next is the card cage. And the card cage had no documentation at all. And so I thought for a while as to how I was going to do this. How I was going to come up with this. And it occurred to me that I can get pinouts for the bus very easily. So this is what we have here. We've got um, a description of how the pins are set. This is from the underside. The pins are staggered. And then all of the pin numbers and their identifiers. And the way it works is that you have um, what the hell are they called? Segments, I think. And so you have A, B, C, and D as in this is slot A. This is, or this is uh, segment A, segment B, segment C, segment D. And then you have side 2 and side 1. And it goes A through V. And they've missed some letters to, ensure, uh, to ensure that you don't get confused with two letters that look similar or a letter that looks like a number. So it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, R, S, T, U, V. Which you won't have to memorize. There won't be a test. But. So. The pin identifier starts with the segment. Then the pin name. And then the side number. So. This pin here is. Um, a. For segment A. A. For pin A. 2. Because this is side 2 away from us. So that's AA1. So this one here is AV2, and then this one here is AV1. 
which when you're talking about all four segments and both sides and shit like that, it gets really confusing really quickly. But I have the voltages marked out. I've got plus 5, minus 12, a whole bunch of grounds, plus 12, plus 12B, plus 5B. B is battery, as in battery backed up. The Q bus as well as the Unibus allows you to have um, a battery backup, and it was usually used for if obviously the power, went, the power supply went out, then the core memory was usually maintained by the supply. So because uh, the core is uh, volatile, that way when you brought the supply back on and the um, board came back up, it could continue on from where it left off. This obviously does not have a battery, so there's going to be nothing on these lines. Ground, plus 5, da 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 da. So we're going to be looking for plus 5, ground, plus 12, minus 12. And so what I used was my voltmeter, and I would identify the pin, so we know plus 5 is on AA2, so that would be this very top corner here. And so I stick my probe on there, and I was going to poke it onto these. And you'll see we're back to our color scheme. We've got red, black, and purple, which means that we've got three lines, and I'm expecting four. That also means that one's missing. And as I was dinking around with this, I noticed that... I'll get my little light out. Hopefully it's relatively easy to see. There are labels on each of the spay connectors. Ground, plus 12, minus 12, plus 5. So basically I was doing everything the hard way. And uh, I guess that's an example of not paying enough attention when I was looking at it. The power lines come from under the bus to the spay connectors and then to the power supply. If I flip this over to do it in such a way that we're not going to ruin anything. You'll see the highlighted green lines here that run along the back plane. This is a multi-surface, or multi-surface, multi-layer uh, PCB, so there are traces that you can't see, but you can see that these double uh, heaters here, these solder connections, go to the individual spades. And then you've got the nice thick bus lines that go to the pins. And the middle layers connect the pins together. So you'll see this bus line here, you follow it through, and it goes to all the way up to the front to here. And this pin connects to, uh-oh, that's good. This pin connects to this one here, which connects to this one here, which connects to this one here, and all the way through the bus. And although it looks like chicken scratch on the underside, what it means is, is that the pins on each of the slots are all connected together to the same signal. So again, I could cheat. I have... Oh, look, the labels are here. That's even easier to see, isn't it? There we go. Plus 5, minus 12, plus 5, plus 5, battery. Plus 5, ground, 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 da 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 So, that was real easy. I now know exactly what's or what. Red is plus 5, black is ground, and purple is plus 12, which is where I get my plus 12 guess on this line. And it does not have a minus 12. Uh, so, obviously only certain boards require minus 12. Um, it's possible that, no, this wouldn't have used core. And core was plus and minus 20 volts, I think. Sorry, I'm having a train wreck of thought here. Um, but... Obviously, minus 12 is not commonly used, uh, or at least it was not going to be used in any board that was likely to be installed into this Cambridge digital system, which presumably was designed for a specific purpose, but I'm down to what I know because I can't find anything about it. So that means all we need to do now is plug it in and check those voltages. So now we'll test the supply. What I've done is I've drawn a little map, let me put it down so you can actually read the damn thing, of all of the connectors that I should be expected to check. So we have the card cage, the tape, and the hard disk. I did notice, however, that I have screwed up my labeling. We duck in here, 
and you'll see the card cage and it's got four rows of three, tape drive, four rows of three, hard disk, five rows of three, and then the spear one, five rows of three. But the tape drive has five rows of three. So this worries me a little. Because what it means is obviously I've made a mistake when I unplugged it, I forgot which went where. This or this has to be the card cage, and then this is going to be the tape drive, and that's going to be the hard disk. And I know that for sure because the tape drive is on this side and the hard disk is on that side. So these identifiers slide down one, tape drive, hard disk. So then now I'm wondering which one of these is the card cage, and I'm pretty sure it's this one because I'm almost certain it was plugged in right next to the connector that went to the main switch on the front panel. I actually plugged this in a few minutes ago and didn't get anything to come up and I was getting really worried that maybe the supply was totally fritzed and so I spent a copious amount of time mapping out the signals on the card cage to see if I could use a different supply and then realized that I had forgotten to plug in one of the cables. It happens to go to the actual main switch on it. Oops. So, supply does work. Pretty sure this is the card cage, so I believe that this was the one that was empty. Given that these are the same and those are the same, chances are pretty good they are probably wired identically. Um, and we can test that out with the voltage meter. So what we've got set up is we are now plugged into the wall. We've got our voltmeter ready. We've got our J1 cable and our um, main power cable connected. Everything else is disconnected so I've got no worry of blowing up the tape drive, the hard disk controller or anything in the card cage. Of course the card cage is currently empty so I probably couldn't kill it anyway but just in case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick you on the tripod and you can watch the voltages and what I'm going to do is, using my map, find different lines on this card cage connector here. I have the um, ground probe jammed into... Uh, well, actually the wrong line right now because I was dinking around with it. Let's get it in the right friggin' place. That would be helpful now, wouldn't it? Come on, you bastard. There it goes. Just need to talk to it. So that row should be all grounds. So this row here and this pin here are all grounds. We've got nothing in the middle. These two are dead. The tops are all five, and then this one should be plus 12. So we jump on there. We will give us some um, juice. Listen for the fans. There they go, nice and soft. And grab our probe and have a look. So we're going to check the top row of three, which should all be plus five. 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 Good. And then the second row, first one in, should be five. And then the center should be, well, I don't know if it's connected or not, but in my map it's not doing that. Let's see what we get. Nothing. Okay maybe another ground, then the next few are grounds, and then the lower left should be 12 volts. Look at that! And the next one might be minus 12. Ooh, minus 5. What's this? Minus 12. Ah, very good. Okay. So now those two are a guess. Those are not used on my car cage at all. Now the next question is, is the connector next to it that is also a 4x3 connector? wired up in the same manner. So I'm going to move my ground and let's see what we've got. Five, 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 five. Uh, disconnected. The rest of those are ground so we should have plus 12 and from the previous one minus 5 and then minus 12. Okay, well that's a good sign. That means that even though I've mislabeled the tape drive, both of those connectors are identical, so it shouldn't matter a shit which one I plug the card cage into. Now we'll move along one more, and we're going to have a look at the tape drive. And that only has four wires on it, which is plus 5, plus 12 ground, and then minus 12. So we'll move it to the ground. 
And then this one should be plus 5. Sweet. Plus 12. Sweet. And minus 12. Excellent. Now, I note that my tape drive here... Oh, I'm up one. We have minus 12 here, minus 12 here, plus 12, not connected, plus 12 is down here. So now it just could be a, a total um, fluke that they're wired up differently, but it also may mean that these two connectors are not the same. So, let's check the hard drive connector, and we'll shove it in what should be a ground for both of them. Ooh. Oh, that's not cool, bro. That's not cool. Oh, that's interesting. Why is it going down? Uh, what I've got it connected to right now is the um, power supply chassis. It continues to drop. How extraordinarily odd. Well, I'm going to put that one down to my lack of understanding in basic electronics. When I hit it and it had plus 12 volts, I got a little worried that the friggin' thing was live there for a second. Nothing like frying off your testicle here to ruin a Sunday morning. Uh, wait, 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 right. Plus 5 should be up here. And over here. And then this one should be plus 12 if it matches the other connector. Which it does. Interesting. And then bottom left should also be plus 12. Whoa! So we have plus 24 there. And then this middle one should be minus 12. Well, given all of the supplies are good right now and everything looks nominal and there's no serious ripple, my guess is I must have made a bad assumption when I was working out my supply lines. Because that is a very nice and clean plus 12 volt, uh, sorry, plus 24 volts. And that is on the hard disconnect. So let's get the voltage meter out of it. Let's disconnect all this shit. And then we'll unplug it just to make sure I don't do that aforementioned uh, fry job. And so that goes to the hard disk. So let's flip the hard disk around. Never put down to malice what can be placed upon ineptitude. Plus 24 volts, plus 5 volts, minus 12 volts. I misread the damn thing. So that's what the issue is. There's a 12 here, 127 watts, 127 watts. So presumably I did some kind of transliteration in my brain. Leaking sack of crap that I call a brain. And came up with a funny number. This is... Well, good. We have all of the right voltages coming out of exactly where we expect them to be. Nothing's missing. Um, I'm not going to say that the power supply is absolutely rock solid, but it sure looks like it's working to me. I guess the next thing that we should do is reassemble the card cage. And pop in the 1173 board and the serial board. Actually, we'll just do the 1173 board. Yeah, let's do that. As an aside, while I was stripping this out, I found a ballpoint pen. And it was uh, tucked underneath the card cage. So presumably somebody just dropped it in. As I was flipping over the hard disk here to read the voltage off it, and uh, did my little segment here, I noticed this. Another bloody pin. So I don't know what in the hell somebody was doing. <laughs> Whether this is my um, compatriot who gave me the system who's losing pins. Or if it's the people that used to own them and these are vintage pins. But, um, boy, I should watch my bloody pencil around this thing, I guess, eh?